I'm the chair of this planning committee. Uh, on my left are senior planning officers. On my right, Councillor Aidan Williams, the vice chair. On my further right are officers from Legal Highways and Democratic Services. Down both legs of the table, our members of council will make up this planning committee. I'll just give you a fire safety notice. Before we start, I'd just like to convey a fire safety notice advice for this evening. If the fire alarm or continuous siren sounds, please could I ask that you leave the building in a calm manner by the nearest fire exit by proceeding left out of the room and down the main stairwell and out of the main civic entrance, which is opposite. Everyone should assemble at the front of the town hall and must not re-enter the building until instructed to do so. If you have a disability which could affect your means of escape, could you please inform a member of staff so that arrangements can be made for your safe evacuation? And uh, we've got some broadcast information as well. Please be aware that this meeting will be recorded for live and for subsequent broadcast on the Council's YouTube channel. The whole of the meeting will be recorded, except where there are confidential items or exempt items. This activity promotes democratic engagement in accordance with Section 100A of the Local Government Act 1972. The cameras will focus on the proceedings of the meeting and avoid areas specifically designated for members of the public. If you object to being filmed, please remain seated in the public seating area. All members and officers must use the microphone provided to enable the audio to be picked up by the system. Members are reminded to turn off their microphones when they are not formally addressing the committee. Um, so I'll go to item number one, and that's attendances. And we've got apologies from Councillor Longden. And uh, Councillor Patel is running late. She will be coming to the meeting, but uh, she's running late tonight and she'll be here as soon as she can. Uh, item number two is declarations of interest. And members are to give notes of any personal or prejudicial interest and the nature of that interest relating to any item on the agenda in accordance with the adopted code of conduct. Have any members got any interest to declare? No, that's fine. Then item number three, sorry. Sorry, Chairman. Chairman, it's a very minor one. It won't be it won't be prejudicial. It's just um, obviously the item eight, page 86, the one in St. Mary's. I'm, uh, I became aware only when I met the lady for the first time uh, when I did my planning visit, that she's a friend of a friend, but I've said I've never met her before. It's only therefore declaring it's a personal interest, but it's not one that I would view would have any impact upon my decision. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Um, number three is minutes. Would somebody like to move the minutes as a true and correct record? Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Um, item four is questions from members of the public. There have no, been no questions submitted by members of the public. Um, item number five is the additional information report. I hope members of the public have had a sight of those that are on the desk at the front, additional information. Um, item number six, applications for permission to develop. And just a quick reminder to the members of the planning committee, myself included, that as well as our local knowledge, we look to our development plan and other background papers listed at the beginning of agenda item six as a basis for our decision making, making this evening. Okay, I'm going to start with page number one, and that's development site adjacent to Chatsworth House, 6 Stanhope Road, Bowden. That's on page one, and we have Mr, or rather Dr Alvey, who wants to speak against his application. Would you like to make yourself comfortable, Dr Alvey? Can Stephen do the introduction? Absolutely. And uh, Mr Day is going to give us an, an introduction. Mr Day. <coughs> Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, the application relates to uh, a site on land adjacent to Chatsworth House on Stanhope Road in Bowdoin. Um, it's a vacant site um, and once comprised land associated with a neighbouring property, Nine Bow Green Road. The plot relates to one of the five plots previously approved for residential development under outline permission 86978 OUT 15 with that permission granting consent for one dwelling on this specific plot. It is proposed to erect a pair of semi-detached dwellings with accommodation over three floors, together with associated access, parking and landscaping. Letters of objection have been received from eight different neighbouring addresses. The key considerations relate to the supply of housing and the impact on visual and residential amenity. 
The proposal contributes towards meeting the Council's housing land targets and identified housing need through the delivery of an additional family dwelling on a sustainable site. The proposed residential dwellings are considered to be acceptable in terms of their design and impact on the neighbouring residential properties. The proposal is considered to be acceptable in parking and highway terms. During the application process, the red edge boundary has been slightly amended and reduced in size to reflect the title plan. The applicant has completed a certificate B and served notice to legally notify any relevant parties. The alteration is accepted and it is noted that this does not have a material impact on the planning assessment. The recommendation is minded to grant, subject to no further representation being received, that raises any new issues by the 21st of May 2019 in relation to the notice number one regarding land ownership and subject to appropriate conditions. Thank you, Mr. Day. Um, just for mem members of committee, ev everybody's understanding that, minded to approve that it that, that it's changed because of late information. There's a dispute about the land, the, the boundary. So everybody's understanding that. Uh, so it's minded to grant this evening. Dr. Alva, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I myself am very confused and I've spoken to Mr. McDonnell at length. Unfortunately, the drawings they presented originally going back in May were not in kilter with their boundaries. Now I pointed out these are the boundaries registered online registry and members are very welcome to look at them. Having spoken to Mr. McDonald, we had a meeting on the 25th of April and I showed him the plans and he agreed they're about half a meter out. And that half a meter over 35 meters is very substantial. It equates to about 200 square feet of a building. So unusually I'm not here to be adversarial. I'm trying to take a neutral stance more so because they are to be my neighbors, but I would like the drawings to be correct. Now, I don't understand Trafford Council in their wisdom, how they've jumped the gun. Yes, planning don't normally recognize boundary disputes, but the applicant superseded the drawings on the 26th of April after our meeting. And when I spoke to planners, they said, well, we don't accept those. So it was very simple, they accepted those, it went to the next committee meeting, which was the 9th, uh, 6th of June, I believe. But instead, they've asked the applicant to issue a certificate B to me because they're actually encroaching on my land and they have to give me 21 days notice. So they can't actually make a decision till the 21st of May in any case. So we're only looking at two weeks. So respectfully, I'd ask committee members for a deferral to yourselves. Sorry, not to planners that it's given back to them to sort out because they've made a mess of the whole thing, quite frankly. And obviously, Mr. McDonald's going to speak, and I'm hoping he'll agree with some of the points I've raised. I mean, I raised these points verbally back in October. I wrote in October. They amended the plans back in January. I again raised points, and they've amended the plans twice again. So, you know, we're here for a transparent and equitable, you know, even the applicant agrees with me. But the council and their wisdom, which, sorry, you know, I've been to many planning a committee meeting and normally everything's up front, right. If the applicant agrees, why are we even, you know, why have they even been presented? Apparently the planner said, well, it's been going on since May, but that's not been my fault if the drawings haven't been right. So I don't have any objections otherwise because they're going to be my neighbours, but I don't wish them to be encroaching by half a metre. And they'll just have to come back to planning again because the whole building is going to move half a metre. So it doesn't make any sense. So I certainly don't have the confidence in going back to planners with it. I'd respectfully ask you to defer it, come back on the 6th. The drawings are right. I won't be here to object. I'll certainly be supporting it. Um, and you're welcome. And actually, if you look on the plan above, their drawings don't even marry up. There's a nook in the corner and they don't marry up. These are the drawings now and I'm welcome to pass these around. And I have a scale rule if members wish to measure. That that the rule won't be necessary, Mr. Alvi. You've had your, th your three minutes. Is that okay? Now we'd like to return to your seat. Thank you. We we'll hear what you said. Thank you.
Mr. McDonnell, if you'd like to take a seat, Mr. McDonnell. And you two have three minutes. Thank you. Quite nerve wracking this. Um, so, Dr. Alvin, what he's saying is uh, it's is correct, and I thought I thought we'd resolved the issues. Um, the new the new drawings had been uploaded on to the portal. Two drawings on the twenty sixth of April, and one drawing on the 9th of May. The the three new drawings, um, Dr. Alvey's happy with them. They fit within the boundary of the land. Um, and you can you can see from the new drawings that they've moved a half a meter away from his land. Um, so really, I think it's been a little bit of a waste of time. Um, that, yeah, that's we are we are where we are. It's um, is is there any way of amending the um, the paragraph where it says so? It's it's grant paragraph number two. That paragraph relates to the old drawings, and it should relate to the new drawings of which are on on the portal. So I I would just like to have those changed over if possible, and then everyone's happy. Thank you. Page, page 19, paragraph 2, it refers to the three old drawings. However, since, since that paragraph has been written, there's been three, three new drawings submitted, and Dr. Alvey's happy with those. So what you're saying, Mr. McDonald, is the report doesn't reflect the drawings that you've submitted? Right. That's correct, yes. Would you like to return to your seat, Mr. McDonald? Thank you. I, I was just checking the additional information report, Chairman, because there, there is an update in there. Um, but that doesn't update condition number two. However, that can be done um, quite quite simply. Um, it's officers' view that the Minder to Grant uh, recommendation to members this evening is the most efficient and effective way of dealing with this uh, issue, which is effectively one of, of the line of a boundary as opposed to any material planning consideration. So um, we would recommend that members continue to to the debate but that's that's for you to determine okay um can i say um my thinking on this application i went to look at it on sunday the boundary that dr alvey is talking about obviously uh, dr alvey is very aware of, of that boundary but i don't see those as being particularly contentious uh the, the issues perhaps more on this application for me are actually on stanhope road to the to the front of those uh, proposed new buildings um close to Chatsworth House. I don't see that issue at the back. I think I'm right in saying what Dr. Albee's highlighted is such a particular issue, but uh, Dr. Albee has asked for um, deferment. Miss um, Coley is happy to go along with the, for the meeting tonight and that the additional information um, adequately covers the issues that Dr. Albee and Mr. McDonnell have raised. So I'm in the hands of, of the committee. Any comments? Councillor Bunting. Chairman, whilst I would agree that it maybe it's the most efficient way of, of pushing forward, um, simply for transparency and clarity, um, it would seem reasonable to, de as, uh, to defer it to the next meeting, simply so that we can get everything exactly as it ought to be. It can then come forward as a sort of standard item without having to sort of say, well, this is the case, but we can do this. And, uh, and it it's simply uh, strikes me as a, maybe a, next time will be a fairly non-contentious issue. It won't necessarily be one that we're going to be talking about for a great length of time, but it would be more transparent and offer greater public clarity if we simply deferred it to the next meeting, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Anybody else? So I think Councillor Bunting is proposing that we defer this item. Would anybody like to second that? Councillor Carey? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we defer this item. All those in favour of deferral, please show. And those against, that's unanimous. That item has been deferred. Thank you, Dr. Alvey and Mr. McConnell for your help. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to page 41, that's Bowden Old Hall, 49 Langham Road in Bowden. And we have um, speakers against this item. Do we have Mr Wardle? Mr Wardle, if you'd like to take a seat. I have some. Yeah. 
Um, before you begin, Mr. Wardle, Miss Coley is going to give us an introduction. Miss Coley. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, the two applications of Bowden Old Halls, the Planning Commission and the List of Building Consent will be taken together. So this introduction covers both those items. This application relates to Bowden Old Hall, which is a Grade Two listed historic dwelling located within the Bowden Conservation Area, and specifically Character Zone B, which is the historic core. There are two applications to consider before the committee this evening: one for Planning Commission and one for List of Building Consent. They will be taken together with six minutes given to the speakers for and against, but two separate resolutions will need to be made. Members are reminded that in the case of the planning application, the statutory starting point for decision making is the development plan with the MPPF an important material consideration. The presumption in favour of sustainable development expressed in paragraph 11 of the MPPF applies. In the case of the list of building consent, the statutory starting point for decision making is the impact on the special in interest of the listed building. The development plan and the MPPF are material considerations, but are not necessarily determinative. The presumption in favour of sustainable development does not apply. The applicant seeks planning permission for the demolition of several buildings along the plot's side northwest boundary, followed by the erection of two dwellings, the installation of a new access route along the side boundary, associated engineering and hard and soft landscaping works, including works to the front of the retained Bowden Old Hall, and partial removal of the site's World War II era air raid shelter. The applicant furthermore seeks listed building consent for the demolition of the buildings along the plot side boundary and the installation of the proposed access route, together with the proposed engineering works, partial removal of the air raid shelter, removal of the site's original pre-1948 glass house and amendments to a non-boundary wall to the front of the plot to create a new vehicle access. Listed building consent is required only for those works which affect the fabric of the listed building, including those which are curtilage listed, being several garden structures and walls, including the air raid shelter. Curtilage listed structures also form part of the Grade 2 listed building and benefit from the same level of protection. The key issues when considering the application of planning permission are the proposal's visual impacts, including its impacts on the significance of the designated heritage assets, which is the setting of Bowden Old Hall, the Bowden Conservation Area, together with the proposal's provision of additional housing and its impact on residential amenity. The key issues when considering the application of listed building consent are the proposal's heritage impacts on the structure of the listed Bowden Old Hall, in addition to its heritage impact on those parts of the site which are considered to be curtilage listed. Objections have been received from the Council's Heritage Development Officer with reference to both applications on the grounds that the proposal would result in major harm to the significance of the listed building and its setting. The applicant's agent has criticised Officer's approach to the assessment of harm in a letter sent to all members and reported the additional information report. However, as set out in the additional information report, Officers have taken Council advice in preparing the reports for Planning Committee. That advice was clear that the local planning authority is required to make an assessment as to the level of harm to heritage assets which would arise from the proposal, in this case very major. Once that level of harm has been identified, a further judgment needs to be made as to whether this equates, in MPPF terms, to less than substantial or substantial harm, and then the appropriate balancing exercise undertaken. It is well established that there are degrees of less than substantial harm and that without a clear understanding of what that degree of harm would be, it is not possible to properly assess whether any public benefits would be sufficient to outweigh the harm. In fact, to take the approach espoused by the applicant's agent would be unlawful. The proposed development, which is the subject to the application for planning permission, is considered to be unacceptable with reference to its heritage impacts on the setting of Bowden Old Hall and the wider Bowden Conservation Area. The established harm is considered to amount to less than substantial harm, this harm at the upper end of the scale as very major harm. The applicants claim public benefits arising from the proposed development do not outweigh the established less than substantial harm. This proposal is furthermore considered to result in an unacceptable amenity impact on neighbouring residents through its introduction of a driveway adjacent to the back gardens of two neighbouring properties. The proposals which are subject to the application of listed building consent are considered to result in an unacceptable heritage impact on the significance and special interest of Bowdoin Old Hall and the curtilage listed structures. This, again, this is considered to amount to less than substantial harm, but also at the upper end of the scale as very major harm. 
Once again, the applicants claim the public benefits arising from a proposal do not outweigh the, the, that established level of harm. Both applications are recommended for refusal for the reasons set out in the report. Members should note that the reasons for refusal of the planning application have been slightly updated in the additional information to correct a typographic error and to remove refer reference to the residential development SPD from two of the reasons. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Coley. Um, Mr. Wardle, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Scott Wardle and I live at Seven Vale Road, immediately adjacent to the site. Um, I've submitted objections to this planning application before and I wish to speak against the proposed development this evening. I've carefully read the officer's report and I'm in full agreement with the recommendation for refusal. As someone who lives and cherishes the local area, I'm as well placed as anyone to appreciate the impact this development will have on the listed building and surrounding area. It's absolutely clear that the value of the hall and its um, setting is the openness of the site. Whilst I appreciate that there is a need for more homes, surely this cannot mean developing on sites which will destroy our heritage and the last remaining undeveloped parcel of land. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. The officer's report states that it's clear from the submitted plans that both of these buildings and associated works would be highly visible from within and outside of the plot including within the setting of Bowden Old Hall. I agree. The report also says that the proposed dwellings and associated works would, be, would result in an unacceptable visual impact on the setting of the wider Bowden conservation area with their unsympathetic modern design and materials. Again, I agree. In my view, this will result in a development that is wholly inappropriate and would introduce an alien feature into the local area. It seems the design has been compromised to try and fit onto a site which is clearly not capable of taking this development. The third reason for refusal states the introduction of a new driveway adjacent to the back garden of our property and our neighbour would result in an unacceptable amenity impact. I agree. However, as stated in our original objection, we believe that the impact on our amenity will result not just from the close proximity to the road, but also by virtue of the scale and massing of the two proposed dwellings adjacent to our house. In our view, the unacceptable amenity impact should include a lack of privacy and overlooking, obscure glazing and retaining evergreen screening is further evidence that this development is just not appropriate on this site. We disagree with the applicant's assertion that there is support for this development. Other than Councillor Hyman, I cannot see in the officer's report who else is supporting this development. Finally, the applicant has set out that they see as the what they see as the benefits of the proposed development. Looking down the list, there are no benefits, rather statements such as there would be less than substantial harm, that it is a contemporary design, and that the site will be landscaped. So what? These are not true public benefits that come anywhere near outweighing all of the many negatives associated with this development. Thank you. I'd like to return to your seat. Thank you. Do we have Mrs Gilgawa? If you'd like to take your seat, Mrs. Gilgawa, and you have three minutes. You'd like to switch your microphone on. Good evening, councillors. Trish Kilgour, Altering and Bowden Civic Society. Um, Bowden Hill Hall, um, Grade 2 listed building, where the gardens have little changed since the mid 19th century. It's located in the historic core of the conservation area. Um, the C Civic Society believe it is absolutely essential to preserve the integrity of Bodenell Hall. It's an historic building and its um, roots are dated back to the medieval times. In fact, some even say 1200. Uh, furthermore, the Conservation Area Management Plan specifically prohibits a subdivision of a plot into multiple units, as this would have a negative effect on the spaciousness of the conservation area and cause major harm to the character and appearance of this Grade 2 listed building. It very much in appearance looks like mid-19th century now. 
The applicant proposes to introduce footpaths, terracing, planting and screening walls to enable the dwellings to have some privacy. However, this is tantamount to subdividing the plot, which again is against camp conservation area management policy uh, plan. Excuse me. Um, in addition, um, camp requires that the design style of any newly constructed dwellings are appropriate to the area. Um, the proposals, which everybody can see quite clearly as they've been up on the screen, um, are a, a very, very ultra-modern, um, stylistically inappropriate to the area. Indeed, um, the applicant himself, um, in a listing of public benefits, uh, describes the dwellings as contemporary design, flat roofs, extensive glazing, metal cladding, concrete fascias, as if that's some kind of public benefit to a conservation area. Um, whilst it is very disappointing and worrying that the planning applications show no respect or regard for the conservation area, the introduction of the new driveway running along two residences is of great concern. Also, if you look at the plans, car parking for five vehicles are located adjacent to the wall as well. Um, this is a necessary intrusion on the privacy and residential enjoyment of those residents of their garden, and it seems very unfair that they have to consider this prospect. Um, finally, the Garden of Old Hall and Bone Hill Hall is a haven for wildlife. Um, there are several um, very conservationist type people surrounding the hall. And over the past 40 years or so, they've noted uh, nearly 50 different types of bird life, along with, and these are important to these people and to us, foxes, badgers, hedgehogs, bats, butterflies, damselflies, dragonflies, and frogs. And we have noted that whilst the bat issue has been covered, um, a, a return visit was recommended. We can't see evidence that's happened. And also, we note there's been no report on newts, um, which, which obviously we would be looking for um, in the plans. As a community, we really do need to cherish and protect our green spaces as opposed to concreting them over. Uh, we need to respect and protect our environment. And the land surrounding the hall is entirely commensurate with the size of the hall itself. It's an appropriate amount of land. Thank you, councillors, for listening to me tonight. And I hope you adhere to the planning officer's recommendations. Thank you, Ms Gilgower, if you'd like to return to your seat. Do we have Mr Ryan? Mr Ryan? And because the other two speakers had three minutes each, Mr. Ryan, you have six minutes. Thank you. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's David Ryan. Um, I'm a resident of Bowden and have been for over 25 years. In that time, I've raised four children in the parish with my wife, Suzanne. Um, just for the avoidance of doubt, I'm not a property developer and nor do I represent one. Suzanne and I acquired the hall in 2017 with a very clear vision. We want to live in the hall and retire to one of the new properties uh, when they're built in due course. We want to substantially invest in and care for the listed building as trustees for future generations. We want to transform the landscape and re-establish many historical features which have been lost over time. And we would design and build two fantastic contemporary homes, which we hope over time will be listed in their own right. The proposals have been very carefully considered over two years, with extensive consultation, including with all neighbours. It's been curated with respected local specialists in architecture, conservation, heritage, landscape design, as evidenced by the documents supporting the proposal. The proposal is entirely consistent and in keeping with the precedents in respect to conservation area issues, where development in the grounds of large properties has been accepted, the Transform, Clip, uh, sorry, the Transform Clinic opposite the Sanford Arms, uh, as well as the old hospital at the top of the Downs in Altrincham. Equally, it is such a large site, it can easily accommodate development, such uh, development which is well designed and sensitive uh, to the one that this is. Uh, the development will bring significant benefits. New houses will, to all intents and purposes, be hidden from view to avoid any impact on the conservation area and surrounding properties. The houses have been expertly architected to ensure they remain at all times subservient to the listed hall. We'll remove a number of unsightly outbuildings which are out of character with the listed hall. This will significantly enhance the setting of the listed building and the conservation area. And despite the report's view that the, this major benefit is neutral in conservation and heritage terms. Um, we'll reinstate the formal gardens, including a substantial investment in new planting and an orchard, ultimately with a view to opening the gardens to visitors to experience the hall and the setting firsthand. 
The removal of the garage will open up the view from the to, to the hall from Langham Road, with the added benefit of removing cars from the street scene. Cars will enter and leave the site in forward gear, avoiding the risk we have today of cars having to reverse across the pedestrian highway and out onto Langham Road, minimising risk to pedestrians and vehicles. The proposal provides much needed new housing to Trafford, where there is an acknowledged excess of demand over supply, and it will provide ongoing revenue to the council in perpetuity. The houses in and of themselves will be exemplary. They will raise the bar for residential development in the area. The proposal will showcase Trafford and illustrate to the wider region how to develop 21st century homes that are in small scale and truly sympathetic to the conservation area and to heritage assets. We will commission trades that will be drawn from across the borough, Sale, Ermston, Altrincham, amongst others, to ensure this substantial investment benefits local firms and the people who work for them. There are many other benefits, but in the interest of time, um, there are some concerns that have been raised, so let me deal with them. The design specifically excludes walls, partitions, fences to avoid any sense that the site is being subdivided. This issue can be further protected by the planning authority via controls and covenants over the development. The site will remain true to its history with a perimeter legible at all times. The sense of openness to the lower part of the site will be retained through the thoughtful positioning of the new houses to the east and west of this site. The new driveway is wide and will be heavily landscaped and remove any visual impact or noise to neighbours' properties. The structural engineer is written to the LPA to confirm the proposal will have no structural impact on the hall. Contrary to the report, the materials palette has been very carefully chosen to reflect those materials present on the site and the immediate surrounding area. Harm to the conservation area and heritage assets appears in a number of places in the report and I'd like to address this issue. I'm disappointed with the committee report in respect to the repeated use of the phrase very major harm when referencing the proposal's impact on heritage assets and conservation. I believe this is unfortunate, serves to confuse and could be considered as misleading. Clearly, the assessment of harm is subjective. Members can come to a different view to officers and place weight differently. I appreciate that. However, the use of the phrase very major harm in the report are considered to be somewhat pejorative and should not be afforded undue weight when considering the proposal in front of the committee. Further details on our concerns in this regard have been provided in a letter we issued to the committee earlier today. Let me stress, and for the avoidance of doubt, all parties agree that the proposal has less, has less than significant harm on the conservation area and the setting of listed building and will leave the substantive benefits outlined of the proposal outweigh any harm. With the exception of the Conservation Officer, we are really pleased to note that no statutory objections have been received, including, and worth noting, no objection from Historic England. I very much welcome the message of support sent to the committee this morning by one of our neighbours. It is most appreciated and one of, one of the many offers, offers of support we have received over the past 18 months. In summary, it's a fantastic proposal. It's got significant long-term benefits, which are sustainable. They outweigh the less than substantial harm to the heritage asset and the conservation area. I trust the committee see the opportunity the development brings to the area and to Trafford generally. Um, I trust they assess the real heritage impact appropriately. And I trust you are minded to support this application. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. If you'd like to return to your seat. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to uh, clarify and correct one thing said by the, by the Speaker. There has been an objection from Historic England on the basis of the impact on the conservation area. Uh, the impact on the listed building in this case falls outside their remit. They do not comment on the impact on Grade 2 listed buildings, but they have objected. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms Colley. Uh, any members wish to comment? Councillor Bunting. Thank you, Chairman. Um... This is an interesting one. I'm struggling to see the applicant's uh, point of view. I must confess, I'm struggling to see anything particularly positive or beneficial about this application. I'm, uh, I've listened to that to the arguments that have been made on both sides. I do not feel that the applicant that the report is in any way misleading or pejorative. If anything, Chairman, I would argue it is slightly faint in its condemnation of this. Uh, um, of, of this application. I think the officers could have gone a great deal further uh, in making the points that they did. Um, in terms of the new builds, they are far from things of beauty, unless you have a particular point on for glass boxes. 
Um, they are almost entirely without merit in terms of their design. And the idea that they're going to be listed structures in their own right, well, best of luck with that one. Um, I am wholly opposed to this application. I agree with all of the uh, comments uh, in terms of the reasons for refusal. I think this would be driving a coach and horses through the uh, relevant re uh, legislation. I think that this would be an appalling act of vandalism. And quite frankly, Chairman, I am more than happy to uh, propose that we accept uh, the officer recommendation in both cases. If I may, I know we have to have two separate votes because uh, they're two separate items, and that's perfectly correct. But I am more than happy to propose both. Uh, of, of the uh, refusals for the reasons stated uh, in, in the report. I take very seriously the, our conservation officer's uh, comments. She, Our conservation officer knows exactly what they're, they're talking about, and uh, I agree with them wholeheartedly. I also agree with the comments made by the two objectors and the reasons for, for, for their refusal. So, Chairman, for me, this is a very much an open and shut case. Uh, uh, I have think I've said enough, I will simply uh, be voting in the way I've suggested. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bunton. Councillor Dr Barclay. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I am sympathetic to uh, the applicant. Um, it's a beautiful space and I can understand totally why um, the applicant would like to develop two properties within it. I, I totally and utterly understand that. Uh, it's a very beautiful site and it would it would be nice to have homes there. But Bowden Old Hall is a grade two a listed building. It's within a conservation area and it's part of historic Bowden. Um, it's a jewel in our crown. And um, I think that really, um, as a local councillor, as much as I would like to see appropriate development um, and more houses built within uh, the area, because I know that we are short of homes, I think it's absolutely crucial that we are custodians of our heritage. And uh, particularly for myself as a Bowdoin Ward councillor, that I, I'm a custodian of uh, the bo historic Bowdoin and the beautiful property um, that's there. And not just the, the building itself, but the air raid shelter. I think that's a wonderful thing to retain. So it's with a really, really, really heavy heart um, that I'm I'm not able to really support the application. Um, I have to say, in response to the applicant's um, con um, mention of the report and the officer's comments, um, I've sat on planning committee for a number of years now, and uh, there have been times when there's been a listed building uh, and a similar kind of application to develop within the curtilage. But I have never read a report that has been quite as forthright and, um, and and as much against any development because there's just not the balance in the right direction. Unfortunately, the balance is in the wrong direction. We need to have um, a lot of public benefit to see changes like this, to actually give up our heritage, lose our jewel in the crown. And unfortunately, um, this application just um, isn't able to do that. So um, as I said to um, Mr. Ryan, uh, it is with a really heavy heart. Uh, unfortunately, I can't support the application. I hope I've made clear why that is the case, um, but that is my uh, finding. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barclay. Councillor Evans. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I really struggled with it. I glanced through the report prior to looking at it. When I had a full, uh, say, tour, is probably the best way of putting it, of the site, and felt quite sympathetic to the development. But then I've spent the thick end of 45 minutes going over the report to try and find a hole through the report. And I cannot find a hole. Uh, find, despite the fact we need developments like this, where we take spare land and build squeezing houses i actually can't find a way through the report I, I i was sold on the whole concept but the report is is pretty solid really and, and that that is my difficulty so i've been all over the place on it but i find myself coming down narrow well more than narrowly on the on the side of the officers unfortunately thank you councillor evans councillor patel um just as an opener, in, in design terms, on their own, I quite like the new um, uh, properties shown there um, and have some sympathy with the applicant. I think they have put some work in. Um, but often in our borough's conservation areas, we consider applications which do have the approval of our heritage officers. 
which many of us and our residents feel pushes the boundaries, pushes the limits. So it's unusual to read um, heritage officer comments that are quite as forthright um, here. Um, to ignore that is to render really the concept of a conservation area uh, meaningless. So I'm happy to support the officer's recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor Patel. Councillor Williams. Um, thank you, Chair. I, I don't want to entirely repeat what Councillor Patel said, but I, I do also have some sympathy with the applicant. I happen to uh, quite like glass boxes, Councillor Bunting, but um, I agree that I, I really don't think that they're appropriate in the site that's before us this evening. Um, I think that the report that we've been provided with is comprehensive and robust. Um, I, I feel we could sit here and engage in semantics about um, the distinction between um, very major harm and less than substantial harm. But ultimately, I think that the threshold that's been applied is correct. And I agree with the uh, reasons for refusal that are before us. So if it's, uh, I'm not sure, has it been seconded to refuse? I, I'd, I'd support um, the officer recommendation and would move to second. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Coggins. Thanks. I'll be brief. I'm reiterating um, a lot of what Councillor Dr. Barclay and, and I think Councillor Patel and Williams have said. I, you know, thank thank all the speakers for for their input. It's it's a really difficult one, and and particularly the the applicant. Um, I I I don't normally comment, but I I do. I think they're fantastic. I'd love to live in a house like that, but um, it, it, it I the the, the um, that's of course not relevant, and the um the report. I'm afraid it, it, it means that I'm going to have to vote for refusal. But um, but as as I said, with a heavy heart. Thank you. Any more comments? It's been moved and seconded that we refuse this application. Two applications. We're going to two. We're going to two vote. Two votes. So we'll do the first one for clarity. If you can find it, which is on page forty-one. We move and second that we refuse this application. All those in favour of refusal, please show. And those against, that item has been refused. That's on page 41. And the next one is on page 71. So, for clarity, the item on page 71, listed building consent sought for the erection of the two dwellings with associated landscaping, access and parking. It's been moved and seconded that we refuse this item. All those in favour of refusal, please show those against that item has been refused thank you everybody okay we're going to go to page 86 that's 12 Oakhampton Crescent in sale do we have Mr Robertson Mr Robertson if you'd like to take a seat we'll just wait for uh, everybody to settle Mr Robertson And uh, Mr. Day is going to give us an introduction first, Mr. Robertson. Um, okay, th this application relates to a semi detached two story dwelling house uh, located on the northeastern side of Oakhampton Crescent within Sale. Um, the application seeks retrospective permission for a single story rear extension adjacent to the common boundary with number 10 Oakhampton Crescent with an apex roof design which projects 1.6 metres further than the existing single story extension of number 10. The, applicant, the application has been reported to the Planning and Development Management Committee because the applicant is an employee of Trafford Council. One letter of objection has been received relating to the design of the proposed development and its impact upon the amenity of the occupiers of the neighbouring property. The key considerations are the design of the extension and its impact on the residential amenity of the occupiers of neighbouring properties. Officers consider that the development is acceptable in terms of design and visual amenity and does not have any un unacceptable impacts on residential amenity. Thank you, Mr. Day. Mr. Robertson, you have three minutes. OK, thank you. Um, I want, we had prepared a statement, but um, the majority of what we were going to say is um, covered in the additional information. So rather than go over that again, I'll, I'll just be brief in a, a couple of paragraphs that we prepared. 
Um, firstly, we'd like to apologize for not submitting planning permission prior to the bill taking place. We did not intentionally start a project without following the due process. It is unfortunate that we found ourselves in this position, which was never our intention. We were unfortunately all ill-informed and accepted the word of experts in that we could build out as far as our conservatory. But as soon as we found out that the advice was given was wrong, we immediately went about following the required process by submitting the required documentation. As you're aware, by list time, the build us up and extra space made such a big difference to us. And as such, we're now keen to keep it and thereby requesting permission to continue as per the submitted plans. Um, just a second. Um, do, 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 do. We understand that this change causes concerns for our neighbours um, due to the wall, um, but we feel this does not block out any sunlight due to where the sun rises and then travels throughout the day. Um, what I would say is that um, we are a young family uh, looking to improve our living space and um, we feel we consider it. And whilst this is a retrospective request, we have stopped all work and we, until the proper revisions have been granted and that every party has been permitted a voice in the process <coughs> before the council makes a decision. So thank you for the time and we hope that the committee approves this request and we can move on with the acquired, acquired approvals in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. If you'd like to return to your seat, perfect timing. Any members wish to comment on this? Councillor Bunting. Thank you, Chairman. Very straightforward application. This, um, I can see no reason of any real kind as to why planning permission should not be granted for this. It's all very simple and straightforward. I appreciate the applicant said he was given false information by a builder. I, I know that can happen. It happened to me when I put my application in. It's just that I knew a bit more and therefore took it myself to the Don and Mrs. Curley's predecessors who confirmed that, uh, yes, I did need planning permission despite what my architect told me. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's understandable how that can happen. With that said, Chairman, there's nothing really much more to say about this application. Very straightforward. I'm happy to propose grant in line with offer so a recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Anybody else? Anybody like to second Councillor Bunting? Councillor Evans. It's been seconded, for, uh, proposed and seconded that we grant this application. All those in favour of granting, please show. And those against, that application has been granted. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we're going to go to page 25. That's the synagogue at 12A Hesketh Road in Sale. And uh, Mr Day is going to give us an introduction. Mr Day. Thank you. Um, yes, this application relates to a vacant uh, former synagogue located within a residential area on Hesketh Road in Sale. Um, the application seeks outline permission for the demolition of the synagogue and its replacement with three five-bedroom dwellings comprising a pair of semi-detached houses and one detached house, together with car parking and amended front boundary treatments. Consent is sought for access, layout and scale with all of the matters reserved. The key issues are design and visual amenity, residential amenity and parking impacts. The proposal has been brought before the committee following receipt of seven objection letters, as well as a call-in request from Councillor Chilton. The grounds of objection focus on the proposal's residential amenity and parking impacts, together with a concern that it would result in an unacceptable overdevelopment of the plot. There have been no objections from consultees apart from the local highway authority, which objects on the grounds that the amended provision of two off street parking spaces per property would fall short of the SPD3 requirement of three parking spaces for five bedroom dwellings. The application has been amended to reduce the proposed number of dwellings from four to three to ensure an acceptable residential amenity impact. The proposed on-site on parking spaces have been reduced from three to two per dwelling to allow the retention of a protected tree at the eastern end of the site frontage and to provide an appropriate level of landscaping across this front boundary. It is recognised that another protected tree in the centre of the frontage is likely to be lost although a further amended plan and method statement have now been received which seek to retain it if possible. Notwithstanding this, it is considered that any adverse impact resulting from the loss of the tree would be outweighed by the benefits of the redevelopment of a vacant site and the delivery of three new housing units. 
The amended proposal is considered to be acceptable with, re with reference to its access layout and scale, with minimum separation distances achieved to ensure an acceptable privacy impact. The proposed parking provision is considered to be acceptable, considering the site's sustainable location, the fact that the parking requirements are maximum standards, and the desirability of ensuring the retention of at least one protected tree and appropriate landscaping. Subject to appropriate conditions, the application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Mr. Day. Um, any members like to speak to this? Councillor Bonting. Thank you, Chairman. May I just preface my comments by apologising. I, I know Councillor Chilton uh, called this in. It would be normal practice for him to be here this evening. I've not heard from him. I don't know why he's not here. But may I just apologise on his behalf for being unable to attend for whatever reason. Uh, in terms of the application itself, uh, I am going to agree with the objection that my colleague uh, raised. Anyone who knows anything about this particular corner of St Mary's Ward knows that parking is already a critical issue on these roads. It's already suffering very severely from uh, parking problems. Uh, every time we go anywhere near that area in terms of uh, our doorstop uh, work, uh, that's what every house is, is what about the parking, what about the parking? I know there have been various schemes that the council's been trying to put into play to try and mitigate some of the parking problems. So far, uh, nothing has uh, been uh, devised which has been acceptable. I know there have been numerous sort of uh, um, consultation exercises from highways in terms of trying to come up with some sort of solution, but so far with no success. As they point out, and, and hence the reason why the local highways authority will have objected as per page 35, uh, I know that uh, the uh, planning department is saying it's it, they talk about the maximum standards and we all realise that they're maximum standards and they talk about the fact that it's a sustainable location but the problem is that obviously people may use their cars, uh, not use them during the week, maybe get the tram to work or, or what have you but they'll par still be the parking issue because people in houses all around this area will have cars, just may not use them every day. Uh, I have no objection to this site being developed per se but if it could be done in a way that met the parking standards uh, that would be great and we could avoid an objection from from local highways uh, I appreciate that we're only one space down I think it is but um, really given the, the nature of this area and the fact that parking is already a, a critical issue in that uh, in, in that area any additional uh, problems being caused by parking are just going to make a bad situation yet worse. Um, so if, uh, as I say, no objection in principle, obviously this site will need to be redeveloped at some point, uh, but this is not uh, uh, what I would want to see here. Um, it needs to be reworked, it needs to be rejigged so that we have uh, the ma really, in this case, this is one where the maximum standards, I would argue, are also the minimum standards. It really needs to meet that because, as I say, this is already a problem suffering from extreme parking problems uh, and uh, hence, as I say, the LHA objection. So uh, I'm going to be voting uh, uh, against officer recommendation and I'm proposing putting that proposal forward and hopefully in the future we will get another application back which I'll be able to support. Uh, because it doesn't yet make a make a bad situation yet worse. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. So you're proposing refusal, Councillor Bunting. I am proposing refusal for the reasons that I've stated. For me, it's not about the trees, it's not about the overdevelopment, it's all the things that I mentioned. It is the, the issue of the parking. Uh, as per the LHA objection, in this really, in this area that already has more than its fair share of parking problems without this application going forward. Uh, if I may also just say, Chairman, I know some people may say, well, there will be parking because of the synagogue. There's been very little because, of course, uh, as per tradition, they walk to the synagogue on, uh, on, and those that don't, well, it's mainly weekday and uh, you know, during the week where the parking issue is at the premium. And of course, what, if people attending for worship at the weekend would be hitting the uh, area at its least problematic 
but because of the tradition of walking to the synagogue, there hasn't been a great deal of, of, of traffic associated with the synagogue as it stands. And so this would really be the straw that broke the camel's back if we put this through. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Councillor Evans. Um, I find myself at odds with my colleague, I'm afraid, as a, even as a petrol head. Um, I find myself at odds. We, are, we have got to uh, get to a point where we are, people can live without the, the, the excessive number of cars that we all seem, seem, to, seem to have. Um, I actually quite like, like the development. If you're if you just comparing it to what's around it, it it's fairly in keeping. It's fairly in keeping and certainly what there, what's there does need to come down. Um, the, the bit that caught my attention was this second tree. I would like to firm up on the second tree um, um, and, and ensure we keep that second tree. Um, that road, I've known that road for probably two decades. Um, it, it, it's a lovely corner at the end of Cecil Avenue and the, uh, spilling onto Har Harbour Road. Um, and I think it's made by the trees. It's a bit of an enclave. Um, so I'd like to firm up on the second tree, but I find myself not agreeing with respect. I think two cars for a house, even though they are five beds, realistically, you know, by the time your kids are 18, you've got two or three 18-year-olds, perhaps they, they shouldn't be having cars. And it, unless we actually get to a point where we... we somehow limit it and if it's by parking then it's by parking so um I, I i don't know where we're at do i propose i'd like to propose this um if my colleagues proposing refusal i'd like to pro propose acceptance well, well, with, with, with. Um, thank you I, I find myself in agreement with Councillor Evans. I think one of the things that struck me when I read the report was that uh, in this instance, the applicant seems to have gone some pretty um, significant lengths to meet the council and to meet uh, the objectors to the application and to try and find um, practical and workable solutions to get around some of the problems that have been identified. Um, I, I appreciate that it's not the maximum parking standard, but it seems to me that we, we approve quite routinely really significant developments where we, we really don't meet the maximum parking standards. Um, I, I think that the proposed uh, development strikes me as being in keeping with the local area, strikes me as being a quality application, uh, and I, I too would be in support of it this evening, so I'll second the application. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Coggins. Uh, thanks. Yes, echoing really what Councillor Evans and Councillor Williams have said, um, the, the maximum is maximum. Um, and, and we also know that in, in planning terms, the highways impacts are, are not given a heavy amount of weight. So I think six parking places in a, a situation where we have a maximum of nine seems not unreasonable. Um, and any any challenges posed by that are not going to be outweighed, given the lightweight given to highways impacts in planning terms. Uh, compared to the benefits uh, that we're getting. Um, uh, just so I'm, I'm happy to second Councillor Evans' proposal, if that has not already been done, uh, but also a plea for some clarification on, on the tree, if anything can be done to save the second tree. Thanks. Thank you. Mr Dave, would you like to comment further on the tree? Yeah, um, so we've, um, we have uh, just received an amended plan and a method statement in relation to well, an updated method statement in relation to um, the possibility of saving that tree. Um, I have to say that the initial view of our tree officer is it, it is likely that the tree will will be lost, notwithstanding the um, the uh, the fact that the development doesn't automatically take it out as as now proposed. Um, but obviously we could apply a condition that requires that um that method straight statement to be implemented and uh, obviously you know w w with the um obviously w w with the desire to, to to try to keep the tree if possible but we can't guarantee that it would be retained i suppose okay yeah nice switching councillor evans could could we obviously emphasize we'd like to keep the tree but we can't keep the tree could we ask for other tree obviously the trees are in the front garden could we ask for two trees to be dropped into the two remaining front gardens just looking at that plan there it looks like the tree is right in the middle so if we do lose the tree could we drop in two reasonably substantial trees so at least given a bit of time we might return to a similar position um 
that that plan there, where I'm guessing that it's the tree right in the middle of the middle house that we're talking about. If we lose that, we could drop two in, and I don't think condi condition that in some way, but it, it would be an imaginative way of solving the problem. Mr. Day. Yeah, I, th I think we, we can certainly condition the requirement for replacement tree planting. I mean, because it's an outline application, landscaping is actually a reserved matter that isn't being formally considered at this stage, but I don't think that actually prevents us from, from applying that condition that obviously the landscaping that is submitted with a further application will need to include that replacement planting. Okay, Councillor Bunting. Just one last try, Chairman, if I may, but whilst I accept that, uh, uh, yeah, if we can put a replanting order in terms of the trees, that would be lovely, but, and I don't object, I'm not objecting to the style of, of, of the building or the fact that it's, it's being put in. As you often say yourself at the beginning of the meeting, but we use part of our determination here is local knowledge. Uh, this, uh, and I disagree completely with, with Councillor Coggins in terms of the fact that we only give highways sort of light touch and don't really, don't really take it too seriously. This is one of those areas where many of the other ones that we've had where it's been a case of, yes, we've not met the maximum standards. You also notice that we've had no objection from highways as a result of that. This is one where we are falling short and highways are objecting and highways are right to object because they have taken into account the local situation. And we're not just doing a one size fits all. This is about tailoring each planning decision to where it is. And that is an area which is already suffering from very critical uh, parking issues. Making it worse will not help the area generally. And yes, I accept that the area needs to be developed. Yes, I accept that what's there needs to go. Uh, the design of the houses is fine. What it needs is it needs simply, need, and I accept that they have already made some changes at our request. And I'm simply saying that they need to do one, one or two bits more to address this because unlike in many of the areas where we said, well, yes, okay, Highway, high, the, the parking isn't quite at maximum standards. Those haven't been in areas necessarily where you've already got a critical problem. That, that it, uh, and therefore, that's why highways have not, on, on many of the other ones, objected, even though we're not at maximum parking standards. On this case, highways are objecting, and for very sensible reasons. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Anybody else like to comment? It's been, it hasn't been seconded, your refusal, Councillor Bunting. Councillor Coggins, you want to comment? No, sorry, I, I second. Okay. It's Chairman, uh, we also haven't had a seconder for Councillor Evans's recommendation about the tree condition, but if so, yeah. do we want to give some? We have. Happen second that. Okay. I'm sorry, Chairman, to be coming in a bit late, but is it possible perhaps through you to hear from our um, highways representative just to hear what the kind of reasons were and how severe the failings are at this road? Because obviously I'm concerned about the issues raised by the local councillor who knows the area well. Thank you. Mr Evanson. Chair, yeah, um, I can concur with Councillor Bunting, actually. He's put it very eloquently. I couldn't have done better myself, to be honest. And I can confirm that... We have had problems down Harbour Road, con constantly being asked for parking restrictions to go in. Um, the road is fairly narrow. Um, vehicles mount the footway. Um, bollards have been erected along that road to try and avoid that problem. Um, but that continues to take place. The parking which takes place in the surrounding area, it tends to be um, for all day parking. It's associated with the town centre and workers associated with it. And possibly, not that we've got any facts, but there is a sixth form college and people unfortunately drive um, to the sixth form. And we do think that they potentially have um, some parking which takes place in the surrounding area. There's no evidence that it's actually close proximity to the actual site. In terms of the synagogue, again, I can concur that we've got no problems associated that we are aware of directly related to the synagogue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Evanson. Uh, hang on, hang, just hang on, hang on, hang on. Come, he's here. Mr. Day is going to comment. Yeah, just in, in relation to the, the point um, that's obviously been mentioned, that it could obviously be continued to be used as a synagogue. Um, it, it's not only that. It, um, the synagogue use would fall within a Class D1 
um, use, which would include um, numerous other types of uses, including other types of places of worship that you know, that might have different traditions about um, people walking to to meetings. So um, th there are a lot of different uses that could generate a lot more parking requirements than three dwellings. Councillor Bonting wants to come back. Just to say in relation to the comments of Mr Day, as our highways officer has already stated, and I've stated previously already, there has been no parking issues surrounded by the use of the synagogue. A, because uh, there is the tradition of walking, uh, but that's not limited entirely to the Jewish population. I know many other faiths uh, often prefer to walk to their place of worship, and that the main issue in that area has been the all-day parking surround mainly in relation to office and town centre use and is therefore mainly limited to the Monday to Friday and therefore with uh, religious observance being more restricted to the weekend it's uh, it, any parking associated with it is coming at the time of the week at which it is least uh, an issue so that doesn't prevent so whilst people might say yes you get parking associated with it that doesn't ad address this issue that I'm making as the highways of has also pointed out so uh, my comments uh, uh, still stand in relation to the the parking we are going to make a bad problem even worse we have already had umpteen issues in that area we have highways have tried over and over again to fix them so far with no success and we are now going to drop another problem into an already uh, difficult area thank you chairman thank you councillor bonting councillor carey um, thank you, Mr. Cher Chairman. Sorry, uh, I cycle past this building eight times a week and see what the parking's like around there. I will be seconding uh, Councillor Bunting's proposal for refusal. Um, it's the parking on um, Harbour Road. There is one side. Lots of times, cars have to stop at that junction because you can't fit two cars down the road uh, to squeeze them past. Uh, it's it's horrendous, it's dangerous for cyclists as well, so I will be supporting Councillor Bunting's refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carey. Um, can I ask, Mr Evanson, um, your objection to this on highways matters, is that a defendable position? If, if we were to fuse it on those grounds, would we be able to defend that at appeal? In, in, terms, of, well, in terms of the, the application itself, um, one of the requests we have asked for from the applicant was to demonstrate what the um what why we could accept the um the reduced parking level in in this particular instance um and yes it, it might be quite problematic in terms of a defendable position um but from a highways perspective we're asked to comment on plan applications and we provided um a response to the application requesting more information in the response which effectively gets the applicant to demonstrate that in that particular area then two parking spaces are, are reasonably adequate and are, aren't and we then could accept um, and often on planning applications we may it may not come to uh, fruition during the um the report we often raise objections on parking grounds and then we then sometimes take those away because the applicants demonstrate, puts an, a reasonable argument together, and then we believe that's then not defendable. Um, but in this particular instance, that hasn't been done um, by the applicant, um, and therefore we've responded to the application based on the information we have available and the problems we've currently got um, in that particular area, and therefore... And the level of, of property which is being proposed, we feel that in this instance we should be looking to achieve a reasonable level of parking, and in this instance the maximum, um, in a, as opposed to providing landscaping at the front of the property. Thank you, Mr. Evanson. Um, I thought that would clear my thoughts, but it hasn't really. <laughs> um, May I? Yes, Miss Cole. From a planning point of view, I don't think there's any prospect of this being um, upheld, any refusal being upheld at appeal because of the fallback position and the fact that the synagogue, albeit um, itself may not be a particular traffic generator, that the uses that could go in there, another place of worship, a nursery, a school, would be significant traffic generators and would generate far more in the planning balance and with a, a planning 
um, perspective, balancing all the issues, um, we, the, and with a recent appeal decision on Bridgewater Road, um, making a similar conclusion in terms in terms of parking, I cannot see any prospect of that refusal um, being upheld at appeal. Thank you, Ms. Coley. Um, we're talking about three car parking spaces. I just wonder. I, I, I don't think it, it it stacks up with an, an, an appeal. This I don't think it. I think it's got to be substantial harm, and I, and I honestly can't see three car parking spaces short causing substantial harm in that area. I know what the local knowledge. I hear what the local councils have said, but I don't think that is significant enough to refuse application on parking grounds. And we listen to what the neighbours think. And, Councillor Shilton would have been here if he could, but he has been lobbied and uh, and, and we hear what the neighbours think, but I don't think it's so significant that we could, we could refuse it on those grounds. I'm going to let Councillor Bunting come back just one more time, then we're going to go to a vote. Councillor Bunting. I can only say, Chairman, that I disagree with you. As the Highways Officer has, has, has already stated, for example, and as Councillor Carey alluded to, we have already had to install ballards down one side of it to stop people driving with two wheels on the pavement because the cars can't get past each other. So you've got cars mounting, not just mounting the curb to park, but mounting the curb to drive down the road with two wheels on the pavement with pedestrians having to jump out of the wretched way in order to avoid being run over. Highways had to come along and install metal ballards down the center of the pavement to stop them doing that. That is the sort of level that we're at, Chairman. They have had parking restriction proposals put forward that have caused all kinds of aggros in that area, and so far they've had to be withdrawn because there was so much objection to them. We may have had, and they have not just one, but multiple attempts at highways have made. Uh, you know, when was the last time you heard of? Oh, yeah, we've got to put ballards in the pavement to stop people driving down the pavement with two wheels on it, with people with pushchairs, and uh, it's quite an elderly population in that area. So, people who are maybe not as mobile as they ought to be, having to dodge out of the way of a car whilst walking down the pavement. That's the level we're at. We're not just talking about it's a bit difficult to find the parking space in this area. It's gone way beyond that level. Uh, so I would say there is a, a, a definite defendable, uh, and if it, and I have turned up in the past to uh, pan, panning appeals and said I'm here as the local council to support the, you know, and it may be an unusual thing to do, taking time off work to turn up to an appeal, which I have done in the past. I would certainly be looking to uh, attend anyone if we did it again, and I'd make the case there. This is not a case of oh, it's a bit difficult to find a parking space. We've gone way beyond that level. This is where it's now downright dangerous. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We'll take the refusal first. Take the refusal first. We moved and seconded. We refuse this application. All those in favour of refusal, please show. And those against, that application is not refused. And we'll go to the substantive vote. Is that, is that no, another alternative motion on the condition? All right, yeah. We're going to, we're going to propose, it's been proposed and seconded that we grant this application with the condition that we try to get a method statement a fix sort out plan for that tr for that extra tree and if we can't do that we'll have two trees dropped in its place okay everybody happy with that i know councillor bunting's not happy with that it's been moved and seconded that we grant that with those conditions we grant this application with those mentioned conditions all those in favor of granting please show and those against that application has been granted thank you thank you for an interesting debate everybody Okay, that's the end of our applications. Um, okay, we're going to go to agenda item seven. That's Great Hayes 74 Bank Hall Lane, Hale Barnes. Sorry to interrupt. Can I declare an interest in this? I found out late this afternoon um, it's Savills, the um, planning applicant, where my husband is employed, although he's not involved directly in this application. Thank you for that, Councillor Patel. It's entirely up to you, Councillor Patel. It's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to you. Okay, Miss Coley is going to give us an introduction. Thank you, Miss Coley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. 
the purpose of this of this report is to establish what decision members would have made uh, if they had been the determining authority for this application. Um, the developer proposed is a 64 bedroom care home together with the associated access car parking and landscaping. It would provide residential nursing and dementia care for the elderly. The application site is located on the southern side of Bank Hall Lane in Hale and it currently accommodates one dwelling. This application follows an earlier proposal for a 72 bedroom care home on the site, which was unanim unanimously refused by the Planning and Development Management Committee in April 2018. This refusal was appealed against and, and a public inquiry is scheduled for June this year. A further appeal has, has been submitted in relation to this current application, but this time on the grounds of non-determination, that is that the application was not determined within the statutory time limit, and with the intention that this be conjoined with the first appeal. Following the lodging of this recent appeal, the Council no longer has the ability to determine the second application. The decision maker is now the Planning Inspectorate. There is, however, a need to establish the Council's case to present at the inquiry regarding the 64 bedroom scheme and with officers' recommendations regarding the position to adopt contained in the accompanying report. However, members should note that the appeal against the first application has very recently been withdrawn and therefore the June inquiry will now solely consider the merits of this second proposal that's before you this evening. In this respect, it's considered that the changes made relative to the first application in marginally reducing the size of the development are insufficient in addressing previous concerns. It's maintained that adverse physical impacts for the site and its surroundings would result as a consequence of the extent of overdevelopment. Moreover, the Council's Children's Families and Wellbeing Service and the Trafford Clinical Commissioning Group remain opposed to the development due to the nature and format of the care home in principle. Unjustifiable harm to protected species has also again been concluded. Accordingly, three indicative reasons for refusal are put forward for members' consideration, which will form the basis of the Council's inquiry case, and these consistent with the reasons for formally refusing the first application. Thank you, Chairman. I realise that we don't get these very often anymore, um, so if there's any questions about process or procedure, I'll be happy to answer them. Councillor Evans. I, I clearly remember this application. I was lobbied by one of my uh, neighbours. Uh, in Hale, who used to enjoy fantastic barbecues at this property and felt that it should be retained as residential, but actually determined uh, where where my position was based on, it was just, if I remember rightly, not that the facility wasn't required, it was too big. I remember that, remember it fairly well. What? So I don't think my opinion has changed with respect to the second application. I just don't understand how we've ended up in this position. Can, can that be explained? Is this a forum to explain that? I find it quite shocking, to be fair. In Well, the, it, it's tactical from the developer, effectively. They put submitted a first application. They know it takes 50 weeks to get an inquiry date. They get that inquiry date. That's next month. They submit a second application. Before we have a chance to take it to planning committee, they appeal on the on the statutory determination date, they get the two appeals joined and then they withdraw the first one. So they have effectively fast-tracked their second application to an inquiry. You, you follow that, Councillor Evans? <laughs> I don't know how we've missed that. Because surely, surely that... I just don't see how that works. Surely if we'd have picked up on that second application and put it in the process as an individual application, or we decided that that second application wasn't relevant, but we, meaning Trafford Borough Council, I, oh, I just don't understand did. how we didn't put the second application, because we could have had an application to put a stables there or five houses, we'd have considered it. And why, how did we miss that opportunity? It just seemed like it slipped through the cracks. No, we, did, no, we didn't um, miss the opportunity. They... They, because of, because of the way the committee cycles work, you've got a statutory determination date which falls not at a time when we could take. So we couldn't take, we couldn't have taken it to an earlier committee because we didn't have all the information we needed. The next committee is after the thirteen weeks, and they just appeal against non-determination. It's a well-known tactic. It doesn't mean the application has been missed. It doesn't mean the application has not been considered. It's a it's a way of they have always intended to conjoin the two appeals. That's always been their intention. 
Councillor Dr Barclay. Thank you. I'm, I'm fairly perplexed as well, but can we make that very clear at the appeal that, that we think that this is tactical? I mean, is it something that we can use as a, as a negative against them? We will be we will be applying for costs on the withdrawal of the first appeal because we've done an awful lot of work on proofs of evidence and uh, incurred significant costs from consultants and from council. So yes, we will be saying to the inspector that we think they beha behaved unreasonably here. Councillor Bunting, want to comment? Am I correct in saying that the only way we could have prevented them doing what they're doing would have been to held an additional meeting? So do we? Ha the only given that that's the situation how could are there any ways in which we can sort of be forewarned that this is going to happen and do that because that would seem to me that yeah you'd have to hold an additional meeting in between the other two to say there you are we're before you date now you've got to bring it to us and we can then take it through the normal process is that something that perhaps could be arranged for if there are any ones such as this in the in the future and they say we don't get very many so it wouldn't make a great many extra meetings uh, maybe that's something that we might need to, maybe yourself and the chairman together, arrange to sort of try and put the mockers on this if they try and do this in the future, just to hold a single item meeting, just to discuss one, to stop them trying to do this tactic. We we could. Um, the outcome would have been no different, however, because even if we had refused the application ourselves, they would still have tried to conjoin the appeals and they would have still done exactly what they'd done. So all all that would all we would be going into the inquiry with the only difference is we would be going into to the inquiry with a set of reasons for refusal which are a determination by the planning committee as opposed to our case being based on what you say you would have done so actually it doesn't make any any difference in terms of our case so chairman if i may ask one more question through you by what justification is it simply that any two appeals on the same site may be conjoined together because obviously if you've submitted one application it's been refused and you're therefore going to appeal on it you then submit a second one and then can join the they're mm -hmm. two separate appeals and so surely there'll be an argument okay you can have two separate appeal dates one for one and one for the other and you go through them in a normal way how do you it, it, are, are any appeals on the same site allowed to be conjoined together or are there other justifications you have to use to try and do that? Because that would seem to me to be a glaring hole that either the planning inspector have been unable to plug for some reason or simply not desired to plug. Um, the, the, it, it is a matter for the planning inspector to determine whether appeals are conjoined or not. Depend, and if, if there are two appeals on the same site, they generally will conjoin them even though they know that's being used to dodge around the system. Well, yes, but that's why we have the, the opportunity to uh, apply for costs on that basis. They, the, the developer does run that risk then. Anybody else like to comment? Well, I'll make a proposal that we go with the officer's recommendation that we're minded to refuse. Councillor Bunting. May Chairman, just to, nothing further to add, just second your proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. It's been moved and seconded that we refuse this application for the reasons set out in the report. All those in favour of refusal, please show. And those against, that is unanimous. The application has been refused. We're going to go to agenda item eight. That's the section 106 and CIL uh, community infrastructure levy updates, 1st of November. 2018 to the 30 of 31st of March 2019. We've got an introduction from Miss Coley. Thank you, Chairman. This is the regular um, six monthly update for the committee on the position we have with uh, Section 106 and and SIL monies. Uh, there's no decision to be made. It's just a re it's just a report for your information and and for noting. Um, I draw your attention to the table table one and um, table table two, which show the precise amounts. Um, a reminder that the Committed contribution for affordable housing, 1,798, is the affordable housing fund. That's the same pot of money. Um, and also that the SIL, SIL monies are presently remain committed to Metrolink uh, and no other schemes at, at, at the current time. Um, the report is otherwise as you would normally see it. So I will just take questions if there are any. 
Anybody got any questions? Councillor Bunting. Thank you, Chairman. No questions to ask. Simply propose as a recommendation that we note the uh, report. Thank you, Chairman. Anybody else like to comment? No. Thank you, Councillor Bunting. It's been proposed we support the report. Do you need a seconder? I'll second that. Everybody in favour of supporting the report? Yep. Thank you. We'll go to agenda item nine, planning code of practice. Um, there are no significant changes to this. We're just, just ironing out a couple of things, making them, firming them up, really. Ms. Coley would like to comment on that. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, this, this report is for consultation um, and does need a, a, a recommendation because if if uh, the committees support the, the alterations, it will go through to full council later in the month and become uh, part of the updated constitution. Um, the only changes, I'll just turn them up. Unfortunately, the highlighting hasn't come out very well on the black and white, but they're at the bottom of page eight and the beginning of page nine in the amended code of, code of conduct. Um, and, and they're threefold. Um, we're making it explicit that there's uh, speakers cannot display or distribute information to members uh, during the meeting, um, because that has caused us significant issues in, in the in the past, and making it putting it in the code of conduct just gives us that extra strength to say no. I'm sorry, you can't you can't show show that. Um, the um, the other the second one is that there's there would not be speakers on an application where there's just a technical change to the resolution. So, for example, we had the application at the uh, orchards last month where it was simply switching between a section 106 agreement and a section 111 agreement there was absolutely no change to the planning merits we wouldn't we would not do a full report and we would not have speakers on that because members aren't being asked to reconsider any of the planning merits of the case if we're bringing something back to committee where there is a change in the planning merits of the case or an application has been deferred there will still there will be speakers to, to that item nothing changes there um and the third one is again the the item on Bank Hall Lane where you've got an appeal against undetermination again that hasn't been covered because we haven't had the issue um, arise but in doing so we had to consider whether speakers were, were required and take legal advice the legal advice was that speakers because the matter was in the hands of the planning inspectorate we shouldn't be taking speakers on um, on that on that item so we've formalised we've take, also taken the opportunity to formalise that in the in the code of conduct uh, everything else is exactly as it has been previously since adoption two years ago thank you chairman thank you miss coley any comments councillor evans the other one was the block of flats in Ocean where they can't mark entrance to the Ocean Park again, back back and back and back and back and back. Would those go through the whole rebrand? Is that not technically? I think we'd have to take a view as to whether that whether the changes did affect the planning merits of, of the case on a case by case basis. I think the uh, the power station. Yes, we probably would allow speakers because the pipe, the chimney, was very much about what came out of it and and the distribution. Um, if you're just shifting something and it's an approved plan, and there's no change, then 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 perhaps you wouldn't. But that it will be. I should have said it will be clear from the report whether it whether we are reconsidering the whole application or not. If we're reconsidering the whole application, you will have the whole report with the recommendation. If we're not, you'll just have the previous resolution and the new resolution, and um, we will take we will do them as a separate agenda item as well. Councillor Dr. Barclay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I totally agree um, with the recommendation, the, the new addition that uh, speakers must be aware that they uh, shouldn't display or distribute any information to members at the meeting. I wholeheartedly agree with that because we so often have uh, residents coming and are incredibly disappointed. They spend a lot of time photocopying and, and all the rest of it, and we say no. So I totally recommend that and I'm, I'm really happy to support that change but as this is a document for members and officers I don't think that will actually filter down to our residents who are coming to uh, council to the planning committee I mean I'm not particularly sure that it would it may do if they read the code of practice so I just wondered if there was a way that we could publicize this in alternate um, ways maybe on our planning portal or um, on a 
sheet of paper that accompanies any of their applications because it's a great shame that we know about it but I think we you know and they don't know about it so we need to share that information thank you thank you councillor dr barkley yes we'll be updating our planning website accordingly to we've got instructions for attending a committee meeting we will add it in councillor bunting Another question on a very, very similar point to that that Councillor Dr. Barkley just raised. I remember the, when we first brought out this issue about the about not being able to hand out additional information. Originally, we were going to say unless it had been submitted to officers for verification. So, for example, if someone's got a, a plan that shows the difference between what it will be like and what it will be like once the, the, the development done, and we said it might be inaccurate, it may not be may, may, may not be uh, showing the correct information. There was a suggestion at that stage that instead of simply banning it and saying you can't show it at the meeting, that there were, it would have to be submitted to officers to verify whether it was accurate or not. I take it that has been ditched, has it? <laughs> In effect, that could happen because if it was with us early enough to verify it, then we would re be reporting in the additional information report what we want to prevent. And we've all, we've always said to, um, you know, this isn't going to stop lobbying. Um, applicants and objectors are still completely entitled to email stuff to you before the meeting, and we'll continue to do so. We're not, there's no intention to, to prevent that or stop or stop that, and we can't verify that much of the time. That's for members to decide what they, what they do with it. But if a if a uh, and the unverified stuff generally tends to come from from objectors because it's not our, it's not architect drawn, and if we but if we got that in enough time to say yes, that would be something we could put in front of the committee. We'd report in the air and we put it on the screen if if right. if we needed to. Yeah, that is a good point because I think when that was originally said, the screen was not in use at that stage. So rather than the placard that people want to hand round, if it's submitted in due court, well in reasonable time. You check it. Yes, it's reason. This is reasonably accurate. It's not sort of fantasy land stuff that you're just saying to try and scupper an application. Instead of it being handed round, we could just put put it on the screen instead. We, we could. We would recommend that they they would should send it to you directly because again we we don't we don't we have to be fair. Applicants often ask us to put specific images up on that screen, and we say no. It's up to us what images we show. It's not. This is that is not to sell applications or to give a particular. It's it's to it's to show give members information which is submitted with the planning application to allow both members and people in the audience the understanding of the applications. It's not to give one particular view or the, or the other. So I think it would only be in exceptional circumstances where we would say yes, we will show an objector's drawing up up there having verified it as being being accurate, we would say, if you want to distribute that to members, please email it to them. If they ha didn't have <coughs> access to that, then perhaps we would consider it. But we're just going on as we... We're effectively not changing anything. We're just, we're just formalising it. Absolutely. Just clarifying. Yeah. If I may, Chairman, just to help things along, may I make the recommendation that, uh, as per page one of two, that we refer this to the uh, full council as per recommendation? Oh, sorry, I do apologize. Thank you, Councillor Bonton. Councillor Patel. Thank you. Um, training, member training. Um, we've lost a couple of very experienced committee members, and so there'll be at least two plus new members. I've been here 12 months. Um, I would welcome any training and uh, anything in layman's terms that's not just reading of dry um, policy documents. Um, I'd also ask if we could have timely briefings for major schemes. I think that would help. Um, could we have feedback from appeal decisions? That would be um, appreciated. And is there a possibility of committee members, newer members, um, meeting the planning, you know, having a tour of the planning department, meeting the teams, having an understanding of the process, um, strategic planning enforcement teams? It would just help in... Um, my mind is a, new, a relatively new member still um, to understand the process from start to finish. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patel. Are, are those uh, items that would go in the code of practice? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, uh, I appreciate that it's not to be included in the report. I was just getting my pitch in. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestions, Councillor yeah, Patel. I can respond to that. Very well. Yes, Miss Cole is going to respond. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, there will be member training in June. 
uh, we need to set set up a date. Once we understand the the, the new committee, uh, we we will need we will need to do that, and we will do that. And um, any suggestions for the topics that you you would like to be covered would be would be very welcome. Uh, we have three appeals to feedback. Um, we wanted to do that to the full committee. So again, that they will come in. They will come in June. Uh, at the moment, the we we um, chairman the vice chairman get all the appeal decisions. I was only going to bring the ones where there's a member overturn and they go to appeal to report. I didn't think that members were necessarily interested in delegated appeals, but I can um, take it. So that right, that's fine. Um, and yes. Anybody else? That's a comment. No. Um, can I just raise an issue? 3.5, I'll just read it to you. Webcasting and broadcasting of meetings. The council has no arrangements in place for the webcasting and broadcastings of committee meetings. I think that's uh, a bit out of date and we need to change that. And uh, much to my dread, much to my dread, we are webcast live to the, to the borough. Uh, may I suggest that um, that we update that for full council? Then would that be um, would everybody be happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We need to take a vote on this. It's, has it been proposed? I think it's been proposed by Councillor Bunting, seconded by Councillor Coggins, that we uh, are happy with this report, happy for it to go to the executive. All those in favour, please show. Those against, that's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. And that's the end of the meeting. Thank you.